Wow! Hey everyone, I have got a doozy of a video for you guys today. I have found what is probably one of, if not the most overpowered solo activity you can do in all of Albion history for making money and to be honest, even the fame is pretty good alongside it. There are some specific chests in the new static dungeons that you can easily do as a solo player even with relatively low tier gear, so I'm going to be showing you how you can solo those large chests and make a ton of money. So quickly starting off with just what you need in terms of your build, it is a standard battle axe solo clearing build. We've got the scholar cowl, the mercenary jacket, the battle axe, the mist color limberscape, and then I'm running shoes of tenacity, although if you want a cheaper option you can also swap to mercenary shoes. As you can see here, my IP is around 1450 per item on average, however, you definitely do not need this much IP. You can probably do this with, I would say, probably around 1300 is what I would aim for, although even less is probably okay, but I would aim for around 1300 to be safe. Once you've got that gear ready, you need to open up your map and look for any of the tier 7 undead dungeons out in the black zone. As you can see, there's a lot of them spread out throughout the black zone, so you can even just go out from the city and go into like a Road of Avalon, for example, and look for zones that are close to one of these with the tier 7 undead dungeons, and just hop over and go to it. Okay, so once you're out in the black zone at one of these tier 7 undead dungeons, the boss and the chest that you're looking for is right smack dab in the middle on top of these dungeons. Now you don't want to go just straight in there from the main entrance because there's going to be a ton of mobs there. So instead you want to go from one of the side entrances like this. Once you get dismounted by the mobs and they're all piled on top of you, go to an area outside of their aggro range and then pop your stuff on your boots so your shoes of tenacity or your mercenary shoes and they should de-aggro you. And then you can just wait till it's back off cooldown and you're high health and keep moving. If you're really careful about it, you might be able to finesse your way inside without getting knocked at all, but even if you get knocked one time, it just sort of makes it easier to get inside to the middle, so don't worry about it too much. If the boss is up and available to take, you'll see this giant symbol on the map when you get close to it, and when you get up here, you'll see this boss as well as the chest up on top of this platform. So now all that's left is killing the boss and opening the chest. So for killing the boss, you want to make sure you're running Rending Rage as the Q3 option for your X, and then Adrenaline Boost for your W, as well as the fourth passive, the one that gives you damage boost on your auto attacks. Unless you're in really low tier gear and worried about being able to kill it, you can also use the Life Leech one there for a little bit of a healthier but slower clear. Now for the most part this boss fight is really easy, it just comes down to dodging AoEs, but there's a couple things that you can note that will help you. First is that it is possible to run out of mana if you don't get really good value from your Scholar Cowl. For example, if you use your Scholar Cowl and then the boss uses like an ability and doesn't auto attack you at all, you might run out of mana. So a really good way to make sure you don't run out of mana is to always just use the Scholar Cowl when he summons some little skeletons because they will attack you as well as the boss, giving you sort of double value on that Scholar Cowl. Along with this, make sure you're always queuing the boss and the skeletons when they are spawned so that you can eat through all of them and get even more health than if you were to just E through the boss. You can see here with my high tier gear, this is a super, super easy boss fight. I didn't even have to use my mercenary jacket once. If you are a little bit lower IP, you can run a refreshing sprint on your shoes to help get abilities up faster and make the fight a little bit easier. Otherwise, if you're high IP like I was in this, I would suggest staying on your invisibility in case someone else comes and you need to quickly drop the aggro of the boss so that you can get region up before they get on top of you. Similarly, keeping invisibility potions on instead of something like poisons is also helpful for this in case somebody comes, you can pop an invisibility potion and run away, making them have to chase through mobs to try to get to you. So for the rewards, they are really insane. You can see this box gives 937,000 fame, combat fame, so that's almost a million combat fame just from killing this one boss, as well as almost 1.5k might, which is really insane. And then the chest is a large group chest. It's supposed to be for groups between five people and seven people, so it gives absolutely insane rewards for a solo player. The absolute lowest that I've seen is around 550k for a green chest, and the highest I've seen is a whole 23 million in a legendary chest. So if you get lucky, you can pay for like 3 months of premium in one chest. 
Now, if you like this sort of content, I will note that there's also some smaller chests that you can do inside of the dungeons as a solo, and they're actually easier to do than the one outside. However, the rewards aren't quite as good. So if you go inside into the main entrance of these static dungeons, on the very northwest and the southeast, there will be two smaller chests that you can do pretty easily. Again, you're going to have to sneak your way in using invisibility to de-aggro the mobs, but once you get to the area, so there's really just a bunch of rats that you have to kill and some smaller little ghoul mobs, and then one sort of normal mob that you have to kill to actually open the chest. Now this normal mob, depending on how leveled up it's going to be, can be a little bit difficult if it's gotten leveled up a lot, but usually from what I've seen they're just super low level and so very very easy to kill. Honestly I can do them without barely losing any health, especially the sword ones are super easy. Now I haven't done as many of these ones so I can't really say exactly how much money you should be able to expect from these, but even the green ones seem to give at least a couple hundred k so they should be pretty good to do, even if the top one isn't available. Anyways, that's it for this video guys, hopefully you get to abuse this and make some incredible amount of money before it gets absolutely gutted by SBI, I'm sure this is on their radar or will be soon as something that should not be able to be done by solo players, but until then, make sure you use it and make a ton of money, and I will see you in the next video.